welcome. And thank you for joining in our ongoing journey through this historic time. Even as we are mentally and emotionally turning toward our national holiday of Thanksgiving and of Hanukkah that quickly follows this year on Sunday night, November 28th, the significance of this period of time in so many ways seems to find a new iteration almost every day. None of us knows or can predict how historians might one day assess and evaluate this era in the broader context of human and American history. But I think it is becoming increasingly clear that what began as a pandemic either uncovered, accelerated, or has evolved into a time of clashing narratives, inconvenient truths, and trends of, of upheaval and of inescapable reckoning. This was another momentous week. While I will not go into the specifics of all that occurred, the news programs and newspapers and media outlets take care of all of that, I will share with you as the substance of this today's reflection that in reaction to the news coming out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, I was introduced to a writer whose name and work was completely unknown to me as the result of a posting by a rabbinic colleague, I learned about a woman by the name of Aurora Levins Morales. She is a, a Jewish Puerto Rican author, artist, activist, and historian. Her writing and activism persistently imagine a world in which the personal is understood as political and vice versa. The complexities of identity and heritage are explored rather than erased and structures of oppression, which she defines as racism, classism, sexism, capitalism, etc., are recognized as interlocking such that they must be simultaneously challenged to be dismantled. Her contributions have been critical to third wave feminism and its evolution. Puerto Rican and Latina feminism, disability justice. She herself is disabled as the result of a terrible car crash. Radical Judaism, climate change activism, and grassroots organizing. While I do not embrace all of her causes or the extent of her causes or all of her opinions, I find her thinking and her writing quite powerful and wanted to share it with you. Just to begin, here are three quotations of hers. One, the spiritual is whatever allows us to notice the miraculous nature of life. Let me say that again. The spiritual is whatever allows us to notice the miraculous nature of life. Two, what is required to face trauma is the ability to mourn fully and deeply all that has been taken from us. Only through mourning, through mourning everything we have lost, can we discover that we have in fact survived, that our spirits are indestructible. I thought that had relevance for the pandemic. Let me read it one more time. What is required to face trauma is the ability to mourn fully and deeply all that has been taken from us. Only through mourning everything we have lost can we discover that we have in fact survived, that our spirits are indestructible. And third, a reflection that starts as Arab Jewish relationships, but really I think she's speaking of the, of the whole world. I want to see a flowering of Arab and Jewish cultures in a country without racism, 
or anti-Semitism without rich or poor or spat upon. Everyone beneath the vine and fig tree living in peace and unafraid. A homeland for each and every one of us between the mountains and the sea, a multilingual, multi-religious, many colored and many peopled land where the orange tree blooms for all. I will not surrender this vision for any lesser compromise. What most caught my eye, however, was the following poem written about four to five years ago and based upon our Va'ahafta prayer. Before I share her words, her vision, let's review for a moment the translation of this prayer with which we are familiar. You shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Find them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remember to observe all my commandments and to be holy to your God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God. Aurora Levins Morales wrote the following, Vahafta, in 2016. Say these words when you lie down and when you rise up, when you go out and when you return, in times of mourning and in times of joy. Inscribe them on your doorposts, embroider them on your garments, tattoo them on your shoulders. Teach them to your children, your neighbors, your enemies. Recite them in your sleep here in the cruel shadow of empire. Another world is possible. Let's pause for a moment. Let us take a break to breathe. And think about what it means to love God. Let us assume our regular positions and um, take that first deep breath. and let us release it. And as we take the second breath, let us release the holdings, the places that are tensed, that are stressed, that she will actually address later in her poem, the way we hold on for dear life with every muscle and with every breath. So we let go. We let go of our jaws, of our necks, of those shoulders on which we might tattoo God's words. Well, I won't, but we might know people who will. We unclench our hands, our stomachs that hold on. I think especially when we're concerned, nervous, anxious about anything, our stomachs get involved. And we might lay our hands openly in our laps as we release our thighs, our lower legs, our feet, our toes, wiggling them and tapping them up and down. And let us breathe in once more these words. When we lie down, when we get up, when we meditate.
we hold on to that deep full breath and feel where it has gone. Feel all the places it is filling. The words that I referred to are God's commandments. Do justly, love mercy, care for the stranger, the widow, the orphan, the homeless, the hungry. Observe the Sabbath. Passover, Sukkot. The seasons of God. Love your neighbor as yourself. There are so many. Any one could be a ma mantra that we might want to breathe in. and hold on to, and then breathe out again. It could be as simple as I am enough. I am worthy. I am beloved. I am one of God's creations. Another world is possible. As we continue, there is one more note regarding her work that will make sense to you. Rock Dalton, to whom she refers, was born, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, in Spanish it might be Roque, Antonio Garcia, better known as Ro Roque or Rock Dalton. He was a Salvadorian poet, essayist, journalist, communist activist, and intellectual. He is considered one of Latin America's most compelling poets. He wrote emotionally strong, sometimes sarcastic, and image-loaded works dealing with life, death, love, and politics. He is referenced in this next phrase as we continue her version of the Ahafta, You Shall Love. Thus spoke the prophet, Rock Dalton. All together, they have more death than we, but all together, we have more life than they. There is more bloody death in their hands than we could ever wield, unless we lay down our souls to become them, and then we will lose everything. So instead, imagine winning. This is your sacred task. This is your power. Imagine every detail of winning. The exact smell of the summer streets in which no one has been shot. The muscles you have never unclenched from worry gone soft as newborn skin the sparkling taste of food, when we know that no one on earth is hungry, that the beggars are fed, that the old man under the bridge 
and the woman wrapping herself in thin sheets in the back seat of a car, and the children who suck on stones, nest under a flock of roofs that keep multiplying their shelter. Lean with all your being towards that day when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of the heavy clouds and justice rolls down like waters. Defend the world in which we win as if it were your child. It is your child. Defend it as if it were your lover. It is your lover. When you inhale and when you exhale, Breathe the possibility of another world into the 37.2 trillion cells of your body until it shines with hope. Then imagine more. This is a Jewish vision. When she says, lean with all your being towards that day when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of the heavy clouds and justice rolls down like water. At the end of every worship service, we say on that day, by Yom Hahu, on that day, God will be one and God's name will be one. And what that means is that the world will be unified in a single vision of beauty, and righteousness of justice and plenty for every human being. So let us breathe in that unity for just a moment. I'm holding on to it as it fills my body. There is a part of me that doesn't want to let go. And yet we must, we must, in order to fill up again, in order to try again, in order to make this real, with the very breath that we bring in and out of our bodies, a miracle that we pray will we get miracles. There is a unity for which we yearn and for which we strive and in which we believe. And maybe, just maybe, as we breathe in and out, with our eyes either closed or softly focused against the intrusions of the brokenness, we can imagine our breath is part of a unified chorus of inhalations that hold us all together. Right now, right here in this moment. She continues. Imagine rape is unimaginable. Imagine war is a scarcely credible rumor that the crimes of our age, the grotesque inhumanities of greed, the sheer and astounding shamelessness of it, the vast fortunes made by stealing lives, the horrible normalcy it came to have is unimaginable to our heirs, the generations 
of the free. Don't waver. Don't let despair sink its sharp teeth into the throat with which you sing. Escalate your dreams. Make them burn so fiercely that you can follow them down any dark alleyway of history and not lose your way. Make them burn clear as a starry drinking gourd over the grim fog of exhaustion and keep walking. Hold hands, share water, keep imagining so that we and the children of our children's children may live. Let us spend just a few more moments with these images very present in our minds. Imagine that all the evils we know daily are unimaginable. Don't waver, I love that. Don't let despair sink its sharp teeth into the throat with which you sing. Let us breathe in and escalate our dreams. Let us keep imagining what we have been taught and what we believe is possible. I invite you to continue, but by way of conclusion and as a message to carry with us into Thanksgiving, into Hanukkah. Hanukkah, which speaks to us of light, that the twin themes of gratitude and of bringing light, of making light, of illuminating the darkness that we see in so many places, that speaks of miracles. Don't waver, keep imagining. I conclude with her words. The spiritual is whatever allows us to notice the miraculous nature of life. May this be a week of gratitude, of miracles, of lights. And I will look forward to being together next week. God bless. <laughs>